Okay, I'm in 40 class. I'm just going to go ahead and take a few minutes to finish up these notes so you have all the information you need for the quiz that's due on Friday. I will say I would definitely recommend going back and looking at that video with the rubber ducky that I showed right at the end of the class. Make sure you fully understand the three things that happen um, when the object is moving closer to the eyes. Um, and, and then more importantly, know why those things happen. Um, what needs to happen to the light um, and, and to, to necessitate that change that happens. Okay, so as far as the lens go, we're going to just go into a little bit more detail on the lens and, and what changes occur um, and how the changes occur to the lens. So the, um, the anatomy of the lens is, is shown here. You can see the ciliary muscle surrounding the, the lens and then we have these suspensory ligaments connecting the muscle to the lens. And, uh, and this is a circular muscle, and so when it, when it contracts, it actually will squeeze closer to the lens. And what that does is when, when the muscle contracts, it squeezes closer to the lens and actually loosens up these ligaments and allows the lens to um, kind of spring back to, to a more convex or more rounded shape because, it's, because of its elastic properties, that's the direction it's going to go naturally. Okay, so with contraction, this um, loosens the suspensory ligaments and allows the lens to become more convex. With relaxation of the ciliary muscle, this is going to pull those ligaments out, tighten up these ligaments, and pulls the lens, makes the lens flatten out. Okay, so this uh, the moving more convex is going to occur due to um, an object becoming closer, needing to focus the light more. And this, where the, where the muscle um, relaxes and tightens the ligaments and flattens and lens out, that's going to occur when an object is moving further away. We need to focus the image less, focus the light rays less. And so again, the contraction um, leads to loosening of the suspensory ligaments, whereas relaxation leads to tightening of the suspensory ligaments. So again, the lens is naturally more convex, but it can be stretched out by relaxing the the muscle and tightening these ligaments. So that's going to be important to understand. Okay, so um, what um, I would like you to be able to do is fill this out on your own. We'll go ahead and go through right now and, and, uh, and fill this in. Um, so when we, for near vision, the light rays that actually reach our eye are going to be more divergent, meaning that they're heading, getting naked into the eyeball and they, they're, we're at a sharper angle. So they need more bending, they need more focusing. Um, so in that case, the lens is going to need to be more convex. So I'm going to use cranial nerve 3 to contract the ciliary muscles um, and allow the uh, and loosen those suspensory ligaments, allow the lens to become more convex. Now the pupil um, is going to need to constrict. So I'm going to use cranial nerve 3 to contract the pupillary sphincter muscles. This is going to constrict the, constrict the pupil and let less light in the eye. And so this means some of those very divergent rays that would be too hard for the lens to bend are going to miss the eyeball. We're only going to catch some of the, light, the, some of the rays that aren't quite as divergent and make the job of the lens a little bit easier, a little bit more possible. So this, this is, the pupil does that in order to miss divergent rays. The lens does this in order to, to focus the light stronger, have more bending power of that light. And then the eyeballs are going to move immediately. We're going to contract the medial, medial recti muscles via the oculomotor nerve again. And this is going to converge the eyeballs, kind of move them into the cross eye pattern. And this is to um, keep light focused on the fovea centralis. So with far vision, it's going to be the exact opposite. The light rays that make it to the eyeball are much more parallel, so they don't need as much bending. So the lens can allow the ciliary muscles to relax, um, which causes the lens to flatten out, become less convex because that's going to tighten up those, those uh, suspensory ligaments and flatten out the lens. And then the pupil is going to dilate via the sympathetic nervous system, um, contracting the pupillary dil dilator muscle and, con and, uh, and dilating the pupil side. This is, this is wrong. This needs to be dilate. <clears throat> and then the eyeballs um, need, to, need to diverge okay, via the lateral erectus muscles. They need to both move laterally again in order to keep light focused on the fovea centralis. And this is a very key concept for the class, uh, for the quiz, and for the exam. So make sure we get this down. Okay, a couple uh, things real quick on vision problems. 
Um, there's two main ones that we'll talk about, myopia and hyperopia. Myopia means you can't see far, um, and the cause of this um, is going to be too long of an eyeball. Okay, um, So when the eyeball is too long, uh, what happens is that, in this case here in D, um, we, the, the light is focused before the retina because the eyeball is too long. Okay, um, And so then you end up um, needing a concave lens in your glasses or in your contacts to actually focus the light less, not as strongly, and it's going to make the, the, uh, the focal point hit the retina, move the focal point back. Okay, so hyperopia is when you can't see close, so you actually have uh, farsightedness, whereas myopia is, is uh, short-sightedness. Um, and, and the cause of hyperopia is a short eyeball. <clears throat> they used to think of those problems with the lens itself, but it's actually the length of the eyeball. And so in this case, in C with a short eyeball, um, the, the, the focus is occurring uh, behind the retina. Okay, so the correction for that is to add a convex lens. So by the time, so it's already been, uh, so the light's already been uh, focused a little bit by the time it hits the lens, and it's going to focus it sooner, and it's going to hit the retina properly. Okay, and then a third problem is called astigmatism, and this is the case where you have multiple uh, focal points, and this is what this would look like here. And so you get multiple focal points, the light is hidden on the retina in multiple places. And the cause of this is in the irregular shaped lens, but usually in the irregular shaped cornea. And uh, when, when the light goes through the cornea, if there's a little bump in one portion of the cornea, that's usually what causes astigmatism. So you get a small little bump, and that causes the light to be um, kind of re refracted over in a different spot, and we get multiple focal points. So the correction for this is the cylindrically shaped lenses where um, it actually corrects specifically for the little bump on the cornea um, in, the, in the perfect location in order to, to knock out these other focal points and get it all to land in the same spot. Another common problem is called presbyopia. This is where the lens loses its elasticity and doesn't become as convex. And so this makes it harder to see close up. And so you'll notice this with, uh, with your dad reading the newspaper. He used to be able to read the newspaper right in front of his face. Now he might hold the newspaper all the way out at, at arm's length, as far as he can reach, um, because his, his point, his near vision point, is now further out because the lens doesn't um, become more elastic. It, it, it's lost his elasticity, so it doesn't um, become as convex as it, as it needs to to be able to focus that light that's close up. Okay, and so the question here is which letter to the right would need to be corrected by a concave lens. Okay, so a concave lens would lead to um, to the to the um, the focal point being moved being moved back further, so so the answer to that question will be D. Right, so myopia we we have this long eyeball that focal point is too early, and so we have a concave lens that's going to move that back. Okay, and you can see this as an example we see here with these lenses. Here's a convex lens, bringing that focal point forward, focusing it sooner. Concave lens moving that focal point back. Focusing it later. <clears throat> okay, now this this is completely a uh, review from last semester, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want you to understand these visual fields. Okay, um, so a couple things to note here that we've got these are the uh, this is the optic nerve here, optic nerve on the left side, optic nerve on the right side. Okay, the optic nerve innervates the the retina, obviously, and uh, and what one couple things to know here is number one. The lateral side of each retina, um, those those neurons are going to go back to the same side of the brain that they came from. Okay, so the lateral lateral side of the retina sends the signal back. The left lateral side of the retina is going to send the signal back to the left side of the brain. Whereas the whereas the lateral side of the where the temporal side, as it's also called, of the right eyeball, is going to send the signal back to the right side of the brain. Okay, but it's the opposite on the medial or the nasal side. Okay, so light that hits the medial or nasal side of the retina on either, on either side of the, or on either eye, is going to cross over through this point called the optic chiasm. Okay, so we have this optic chiasm, it's the cross point. So everything that comes on the medial side is going to cross to the opposite side of the brain. Okay, and then the other thing to note from here is that we get now where we have depth perception of 3D vision is because both eyes are not seeing the exact same thing. Both eyes can see all of this right here, but only the left eye can see this far left side, and only the right eye can see this far right side. 
And so because we have a slightly different picture from each eyeball, this is what allows us to have, um, allows us to have depth perception or 3D vision. Okay. Okay, so this just gets into a little bit more detail on exactly where the light um, uh, from different fields of vision actually hits the eyeballs. Okay, we went over this last semester, so I'm just going to do it briefly here. But as you can see here by the color-coded slides, the, everything in the right field of vision is going to be covered in color in pink here. Okay, and so the right field of vision, the left eye, actually picks that up with the lateral side or the temporal side. And then the right eye is going to pick that up with the medial side or the nasal side. Okay, so remember that the information from the right field of vision from the left eye is going to go to the left side of the brain. And then the right field of vision um, with the right eye is also going to go to the left side of the brain because, of, because it crosses through the optic chiasm. And then the exact opposite is going to happen with the left field of vision. Okay. Um, and then you'll see the same situation here. If we're looking at this guy um, wiping out on a surfboard, um, what we see here is actually everything from the, left, from the right field of vision is being processed by the left side of the brain. And everything from the right from the left field of vision is being processed by the um, by the right side of the brain. And you can see how it just flipped like that. Okay, so make sure you understand that. And what I want you to do with this is really just go through this and make sure you can fill this out. I'm not going to fill it out for you right now, but make sure you can fill it out. So the right for the right field of vision, what side of the retina is it hitting? The nasal or temporal? Does it cross over the optic chiasm? What optic nerve side? what side of the occipital lobe. Do that for each of these, each eye, each field of vision. If you got that down, you should be good to go. Uh, we will see you guys next week on Wednesday. Um, have, a, have a good rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.